Chapter Two of Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ellie Cat. Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic by Thomas Higginson. Chapter Two: Taliesin of the Radiant Brow. In times past there were enchanted islands in the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Wales, and even now the fishermen sometimes think they see them. On one of these there lived a man named Teged Boel, and his wife called Carduin. They had a son, the ugliest boy in the world, and Carduin formed a plan to make him more attractive by teaching him all possible wisdom. She was a great magician, and resolved to boil a large cauldron full of knowledge for her son, so that he might know all things, and be able to predict all that was to happen. Then she thought people would value him in spite of his ugliness. But she knew that the cauldron must burn a year and a day without ceasing, until three blessed drops of the water of knowledge were obtained from it, and those three drops would give all the wisdom she wanted. So she put a boy named Gwion to stir the cauldron, and a blind man named Morda to feed the fire, and made them promise never to let it cease boiling for a year and a day. She herself kept gathering magic herbs and putting them into it. One day, when the year was nearly over, it chanced that three drops of the liquor flew out of the cauldron and fell on the finger of Gwion. They were fiery hot, and he put his finger to his mouth, and the instant he tasted them he knew that they were the enchanted drops for which so much trouble had been taken. By their magic he at once foresaw all that was to come, and especially that Carduin the Enchantress would never forgive him. Then Gwion fled. The cauldron burst in two, and all the liquor flowed forth, poisoning some horses which drank it. These horses belonged to a king named Gwidno. Carduin came in and saw all the toil of the whole year lost. Seizing a stick of wood, she struck the blind man Morda fiercely on the head, but he said, I am innocent, it was not I who did it. True, said Carduin, it was the boy Gwion who robbed me, and she rushed to pursue him. He saw her and fled, changing into a hare, but she became a greyhound and followed him. Running to the water, he became a fish but she became another and chased him below the waves. He turned himself into a bird, when she became a hawk and gave him no rest in the sky. Just as she swooped on him, he espied a pile of winnowed wheat on the floor of a barn, and dropping upon it he became one of the wheat grains. Changing herself into a high-crested black hen, Carduin scratched him up and swallowed him, when he changed at last into a boy again, and was so beautiful that she could not kill him outright, but wrapped him in a leathern bag and cast him into the sea, committing him to the mercy of God. This was on the twenty-ninth of April. Now Gwidno had a weir for catching fish on the sea-strand near his castle, and every day in May he was wont to take a hundred pounds worth of fish. He had a son named Elfin, who was always poor and unsuccessful but that year the father had given the son leave to draw all the fish from the weir, to see if good luck would ever befall him and give him something with which to begin the world. When Elfin went next to draw the weir, the man who had charge of it said in pity, Thou art always unlucky. There is nothing in the weir but a leathern bag, which is caught on one of the poles. How do we know, said Elfin, that it may not contain the value of a hundred pounds? Taking up the bag and opening it, the man saw the forehead of the boy and said to Elfin, Behold, what a radiant brow! Let him be called Taliesin, said Elfin. Then he lifted the boy and placed him sorrowfully behind him, and made his horse amble gently that before had been trotting, and carried him as softly as if he had been sitting in the easiest chair in the world, and the boy of the radiant brow made a song to Elfin as they went along. Never in Gwidno's where was there such good luck as this night. Fair elfin, dry thy cheeks. Being too sad will not avail, although thou thinkest thou hast no gain. Too much grief will bring thee no good, nor doubt the miracles of the Almighty. Although I am but little, I am highly gifted. 
from seas and from mountains and from the depths of rivers god brings wealth to the fortunate man elfin of lively qualities thy resolution is unmanly thou must not be over-sorrowful better to trust in god than to forebode ill weak and small as i am on the foaming beach of the ocean in the day of trouble i shall be of more service to thee than three hundred salmon elfin of notable qualities be not displeased at thy misfortune although reclined thus weak in my bag there lies a virtue in my tongue while i continue thy protector thou hast not much to fear then elfin asked him art thou man or spirit and in answer the boy sang to him this tale of his flight from the woman i have fled with vigour i have fled as a frog i have fled in the semblance of a crow scarcely finding rest i have fled vehemently i have fled as a chain of lightning i have fled as a roe into an entangled thicket i have fled as a wolf cub i have fled as a wolf in the wilderness i have fled as a fox used to many swift bounds and quirks i have fled as a marten which did not avail i have fled as a squirrel that vainly hides i have fled as a stag's antler of ruddy course i have fled as an iron in a glowing fire i have fled as a spearhead of woe to such as have a wish for it i have fled as a fierce bull bitterly fighting i have fled as a bristly boar seen in a ravine i have fled as a white grain of pure wheat into a dark leathern bag i was thrown and on a boundless sea i was sent adrift which was to me an omen of being tenderly nursed and the lord god then set me at liberty then elfin came with talies into the house of his father and gwydno asked him if he had a good haul at the fish weir i have something better than fish what is that asked his father i have a bard said elfin alas what will he profit thee said gwydno to which taliesin replied he will profit him more than the weir ever profited thee said gwydno art thou able to speak and thou so little then taliesin said i am better able to speak than thou to question me from this time elfin always prospered and he and his wife cared for taliesin tenderly and lovingly and the boy dwelt with him until he was thirteen years old when elfin went to make a christmas visit to his uncle Maelgwyn, who was a great king and held open court there were four and twenty bards there and all proclaimed that no king had a wife so beautiful as the queen or a bard so wise as the twenty-four who all agreed upon this decision elfin said on the contrary that it was he himself who had the most beautiful wife and the wisest bard and for this he was thrown into prison taliesin learning this set forth from home to visit the place and free his adoptive father elfin in those days it was the custom of kings to sit in the hall and dine in royal state with lords and bards about them who should keep proclaiming the greatness and glory of the king and his knights taliesin placed himself in a quiet corner waiting for the four-and-twenty bards to pass and as each one passed by taliesin made an ugly face and gave a sound with his finger on his lips thus <laughs> each bard went by and bowed himself before the king but instead of beginning to chant his praises could only play <laughs> on its lips as the boy had done the king was amazed and thought they must be intoxicated so he sent one of his lords to them telling them to behave themselves and remember where they were twice and thrice he told them but they could only repeat the same foolishness until at last the king ordered one of his squires to give a blow to the chief bard and the squire struck him a blow with a broom so that he fell back on his seat then he arose and knelt before the king and said o oh, honourable king be it known unto your grace that it is not from too much drinking that we are dumb but through the influence of a spirit which sits in the corner yonder in the form of a child then the king bade his squire to bring taliesin before him and he asked the boy who he was he answered primary chief bard i am to elfin and my original country is the region of the summer stars i am a wonder whose origin is not known i have been fostered in the land of the deity i have been teacher to all intelligences i am able to instruct the whole universe 
I was originally little Gwion, and at length I am Taliesin. Then the king and his nobles wondered much, for they had never heard the like from a boy so young. The king then called his wisest bard to answer Taliesin, but he could only play on his lips as before, and each of the king's four and twenty bards tried in the same way and could do nothing more. Then the king bade Taliesin sing again, and he began. Discover thou what is the strong creature from before the flood, without flesh, without bone, without vein, without blood, without head, without feet. It will neither be older nor younger than at the beginning. Great God, how the sea whitens when first it comes! Great are its gusts when it comes from the south! Great are its evaporations when it strikes on coasts! It is in the field, it is in the wood, without hand and without foot, without signs of old age, it is also so wide as the surface of the earth, and it was not born, nor was it seen. It will cause consternation wherever God willeth, on sea and on land. It neither sees nor is seen, its course is devious, and will not come when desired. On land and on sea it is indispensable, it is without equal, it is many-sided, it is not confined, it is incomparable, it comes from four quarters, it is noxious, it is beneficial, it is yonder, it is here, it will decompose, but it will not repair the injury, it will not suffer for its doings, seeing it is blameless. But being has prepared it out of all creatures by a tremendous blast to wreak vengeance on Malgwid Gwynedd. One being has prepared it out of all creatures by a tremendous blast to wreak vengeance on Malgwin Gwynedd. And while he was thus singing his verse near the door, there came suddenly a mighty storm of wind, so that the king and all his nobles thought the castle would fall on their heads. They saw that Taliesin had not merely been singing the song of the wind, but seemed to have the power to command it. Then the king hastily ordered that Elfin should be brought from his dungeon and placed before Taliesin, and the chains came loose from his feet, and he was set free. As they rode away from the court, the king and his courtiers rode with them, and Taliesin bade Elfin propose a race with the king's horses. Four and twenty horses were chosen, and Taliesin got four and twenty twigs of holly, which he had burnt black, and he ordered the youth who was to ride Elfin's horse to let all the others set off before him, and bade him as he overtook each horse to strike him with a holly twig and throw it down. Then he had him watch where his own horse should stumble, and throw down his cap at the place. The race being won, Taliesin brought his master to the spot where the cap lay, and put workmen to dig a hole there. When they had dug deeply enough, they found a cauldron full of gold, and Taliesin said, Elfin, this is my payment to thee for having taken me from the water and reared me until now. And on this spot stands a pool of water until this day. End of chapter 2 Recording by Ellie Cat.